multiple versions of a given package on a single solution, not even knowing which version of a package is being used, those are things that a .NET developer knows pretty well. Hey friends, recently I published a video talking about Snitch, an amazing tool that helps you out managing your dependencies in your .NET projects. And some people reach out asking me why do we need such a tool when nowadays you have central package management. That is true, but I believe that we are not in a point where we can jump to central package management with confidence. And I have five things that I believe that needs to be done by the Nougat team to, to change that. And once that is changed, I honestly believe that the way that we manage references nowadays may change forever. Let's take a look. Number one, tooling. Tooling in the .NET ecosystem is one of the most amazing things that we have. You have Visual Studio, an amazing IDE. If you can, and if you are lucky enough, you can use Rider, also an, an amazing IDE. And all of them help you a lot with those tasks like managing packages, references, and all the other things. Most recently, we have seen a shift from using only the IDE, but being able to use also the CLI to accomplish a lot of tasks. And at the moment, if you look into the, the release post about central package management, you know that they don't assume a support for either the Visual Studio or .NET CLI. In Visual Studio, you can do a lot of those things that you can do with the central package management, but isn't perfect yet. And what I believe is that once Microsoft starts investing on Visual Studio and .NET CLI to bring an awesome experience in central package management, tools like Rider will need to follow along and they will need to, to deliver the same kind of experience. Until that doesn't happen, I don't think that this thing can, can move on. Two, improved CLI experience. I believe that the CLI plays a huge role here because if we start by the CLI, at least we have a way to do it on, on, on the beginning and a lot of the things that are in place since the movement to the .NET Core will keep working and will be a natural evolution. So other tools can come in place and be built on top of the .NET tool itself. So for example, nowadays using .NET 7 SDK, the latest preview version, this is the behavior that I have. For example, if I add um, a new package, for example, the most common one, Newton soft.json, and I add it, what you will see is that on my CS approach, I will have a package reference, including the version, on a project that has the directory packages.props. So I have I'm managing centrally the versions of packages. So what I would expect to happen in this case is that the .NET CLI could understand that and on generating this thing could do something like this. Three, migrations. If you have your solution really complex and you want to move from that distributed package management, each project has its own dependencies and you want to move into the central package management, you need a way to do it. Nowadays, if you search online, you will find some tools like this one where you can run the tool and the migration will be done for you. What I believe is until the moment that the .NET CLI has a, a way to do that, it's likely that a lot of people will not be doing this thing because it will be not natural for them. They will need to search for other tools online. And if Microsoft really wants this thing, this needs to be a feature inside of .NET CLI. Four, templates. If we are all using this version of program.cs where you remove all that clutter around the source code, it's obviously because Microsoft has been using this everywhere. We have seen it in videos, we are seeing it on templates. So when you create a new project, saying that you want a console application, for example, you will have something like this. Once you start seeing this everywhere, most likely you will adopt it. So what I honestly believe is that if, when you run a .NET new and you provide the name of your template, 
what should happen is that it should tag along with the definition in place for central package versioning. Okay. For example, if now I go here and I create a new X unit project, what will happen is that because my project needs references for some packages like these ones, I have an error because I'm using central package versioning. But in this case, I'm referencing the packages right here and specifying the versions. What I would like to happen is that the CLI would be sensitive enough to understand that and act accordingly. Even if I need to provide an extra argument or a flag saying that I, I want this thing to happen. Five samples. One thing that the .NET space is really good is that you have really good documentation, really good examples. You have things that go really deep and can be really useful when you are building production code. And for example, samples like this one from Microsoft, where you specify a complex application, how to build using DDD and all those kind of things. What I hope that you will happen is that in the future, once the tooling is in place and all the other things that I referenced are in place, that Microsoft changes these uh, samples. And in the source code, you find how to do that, okay? Nowadays, you can't find here the directory that dot packages, dot props, but what I, I hope is that they will start using on this kind of samples. So when you go here looking for inspiration, you can see how things can. I think we are not there yet. There's an, a journey to, to go through and we need to have a lot of tooling, samples, all those kind of things in place. But if Microsoft invests uh, time and resources on this thing, I believe that in the future, this could be the definitive way of doing package management in .NET. If you want to achieve the same thing nowadays without using central package management, I will invite you to play around with Packet. Packet is in the ecosystem for a long time, is really good. The thing that is missing in Packet is basically all that default integration in the .NET space from the Visual Studio to the CLI when you only install one thing and you have it all. So it's that thing that is exciting to me in central package management, is the perspective that if Microsoft invests in this thing, this can be the default way and you don't need to install a lot of things, you don't need to learn new tools, it will be the default way of doing things. So I hope that you like this video. I will see you soon. And in the meanwhile, just keep things simple.